Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gamant Singh. WAPA's governing board approved a number of contracts Thursday during the regular meeting. Among them was the announcement that WAPA had entered into a 25-year agreement to bring a new resource to the grid. News 2's Erica Parsons has the story. WAPA officials sealed a deal Thursday to add a new resource to the territory's power grid. WAPA's governing board approved a motion Thursday to allow WAPA to enter into a 25-year contract with Tibur Energy. Well, it's a dispatchable renewable source, which means it's available 24-7. WAPA would buy power from Tibur's anaerobic digester facility, which creates a biogas. So it allows for us to, to put that kind of a resource on as well as hedge against um, commodities fluctuating in, in for, for 20 years. It gives us a fixed cost in our portfolio that we can count on and not worry about fluctuating or getting higher. The biofuel will consist mainly of king grass grown on St. Croix, rum waste from the industrial park, and bugs. That will be at a rate of around 24 cents per kilowatt hour. This agreement with Tibber Energy helps WAPA achieve their overall goal of providing lower cost and reliable electric service. Right now we have 10 megawatts of solar coming to St. Croix. There's 7 megawatts for Tibber. Um, there's another uh, 5 to 8 megawatts of solar on St. Thomas. Um, then we're doing a full conversion of 8 units for the propane. The facility won't be completed until June 2015, but it's one more addition towards affordable energy. There's a lot going on right now in, in, in WAPA for the territory, um, and hopefully by, by next summer we'll start seeing some significant relief for the ratepayers. We expect some 30% next summer with just a propane project. These others will play a role as well, and, and we hope to get a product to the ratepayer that they can afford and, and it can be reliable for them as well. Erica Parsons, News 2. Now, the board also approved a motion to let WAPA enter into an interconnection agreement with TIBAR to allow the electrical interconnection of the proposed power facility. During WAPA's board meeting Thursday, WAPA officials also announced the 2013 recipients of the Alva Cease McFarland Scholarship. Family members were present as St. Croix students Miles Ventura and Kareem Edwards were presented with their awards. Family members were also there for St. Thomas student Jaron Harris's presentation. Laron Henry is currently in college and could not be present for his award. WAPA director Hugo Hodge congratulated the students and highlighted the fact that these are the people who helped shape WAPA's future, like former recipients Robert Ventura Jr. and Carl Andrew. This is uh, one of the, the, the best projects that we have um, going here in the, in the Water and Power Authority. It's how we ensure that we have engineers uh, coming back to work for the authority and, and contributing to some of the, 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 the serious technical challenges we have here in the territory. We're proud to have young local Virgin Islanders go abroad and come back and make us all proud. Downtown Christiansted is back to normal. A fuel delivery truck that had been leaking propane for several days was finally drained and removed Thursday evening. Fire officials said firefighters who were working at the scene completely drained the truck of all the liquid propane by 5 p.m. Wednesday. Police were given the all clear to open all roads. Officials also gave hotel and restaurant owners who were previously evacuated the okay to resume operations. The fuel truck belonged to Antilles Gas Corporation. It began leaking propane Monday morning while making a regular delivery. Well, Crime Stoppers encourage you to visit their website and click on How It Works to learn how your tip works. They remind you that even the smallest bit of information may be just what is needed. On St. Croix, the VIPD needs your help. They say on Thursday, June 13th at 9.30 p.m., police were dispatched to the hospital to interview a 45-year-old man who was being treated for gunshot wounds. The man said he was in the studio next to his estate Ruby home when he heard voices. When he opened the door, to see who was outside, several shots were fired at him. The only description he was able to give was three men dressed in black shooting at him. On St. John, officers say on June 14th, they received a report that a red and white 24-foot parasail boat was stolen from the Weston Dock. The last time the boat was seen was June 12th in the late afternoon. The boat was recovered in the area of Tatchke. If you know anything about this incident, Police let police know. Now on Wednesday, June 19th on St. Thomas, around 1 a.m., officers found 41-year-old Patroy Williams killed by a single gunshot wound to the back, lying in the roadway in the state Friedenhoy. Investigators are trying to develop a timeline of his whereabouts prior to the murder. 
Submit your information on these or any other crimes at www.crimestoppersusvi.org or by calling 1-800-222-TIPS, that's 1-800-222-8477, or by texting USVI plus your message to crimes at 274637. Remember, if your tip leads to an arrest or the recovery of stolen property, illegal drugs, or weapons, you will receive a reward to be paid according to your instructions. The Virgin Islands Next Generation Network, or VINGN, awarded a contract for the installation and testing of network equipment at community anchor institutions, or CAIs. CAIs include all schools, health, health care, public safety, and government offices, and the award will connect these institutions to the territory's high-speed broadband internet network. The VINGN Board of Directors authorized a contract with the Evertech Group, for a total of $430,000. It also authorized a contract for fiber optic cable for a total of $105,000. Well, as we reported earlier, Dockside Bookshop, the only bookstore in St. Thomas, will be shutting business down very soon. And St. Thomian patrons are asking why. Taxes and higher utility rates are part of the problem, but the global shift toward electronic books and online buying is turning out to be a major culprit. News 2's April night has more. Dockside Bookshop on St. Thomas has been getting more customers than usual these past few days. Not because business is picking up. Customers are scrambling because by the end of next month, Dockside will not be here. To many, the news that Dockside was closing came as a shock. It's the only bookstore on St. Thomas. The main reason we're closing is because we can't pay our bills. We're not making enough money to pay our bills. Selling books on the island is pretty rough for Dockside. We do have a lot of expenses here that they don't have in the States. For one, it has to pay shipping for all the books, as well as customs and excise taxes. And then there's WAPA. Besides it being very expensive, we lose a lot of equipment. Everything we have is on a battery backup. It constantly burns out the batteries. But in the end, it might have been the advent of online buying and e-reading that ultimately killed this traditional hardcover and paperback bookstore. It is cheaper. Um, electronic books, which is mostly dominated by Amazon's Kindle, has uh, taken a good chunk out of everything from hardcovers to, to small paperback sales. But while e-books and e-readers such as Kindle and Nook proliferate, there are still St. Thomians who are not digging the electronic trend. No, 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 no. I don't deal with a computer, to be honest with you. I know everybody today have other ways, but this is the easiest yeah. one for us mm -hmm. because we can come in, see, put down, look at it. Losing Dockside is a big blow to locals. I think it's a shame that uh, the bookstore is closing. I don't feel good. I wish it could stay. Locals can do nothing but accept the inevitable that come end of July, this corner store at Havenside Mall in St. Thomas will display nothing but an empty storefront. April night, News 2. Well, Dockside Bookshop will continue its operations until the end of July, possibly early August, or until all of its inventory is sold out. Tourism Commissioner Beverly Nicholson Doty is all for sustainable tourism in the Caribbean in her presentation to dignitaries gathered in Belgium for a tourism conference. Doty says that a vibrant tourism sector is one of the most powerful tools to alleviate economic despair. However, Doty laments that despite tourism's contribution as income generator and the fact that it is the largest growing sector of the region, it remains one of those industries that don't get the priority attention. Doty calls for greater commitment from policymakers to recognize major economic drivers. Nelson Mandela's family rushed to his bedside today after receiving word his condition was deteriorating, but now there's word the 94-year-old is stable. People sang and released balloons outside the hospital in Pretoria, where former South African President Nelson Mandela is in critical but stable condition. Mandela has been hospitalized for weeks with a lung infection. Mandela's eldest daughter says her family still has hope he will pull through. President Obama is scheduled to visit South Africa this weekend. Mandela became South Africa's first black president in 1994 after being held captive, captive for 27 years as a political prisoner. His family has asked for privacy, but they have been mobbed by supporters and the media. Meanwhile, after several test votes, the Senate passed the bipartisan immigration bill that will clear the way for millions of illegal immigrants to gain 
American citizenship. But House Republicans are warning that the legislation may be dead on arrival. Danielle Nottingham reports from Capitol Hill. Washington, D.C. The June Senate passed major immigration reform Thursday that Senate, could help keep families like the Alfaros together. 14-year-old Jaylene Alfaro came here with her parents illegally from Honduras. The government recently threatened to send her father back. Many people are being separated from their kids. Many kids are being orphans even though their, ch uh, their parents are alive. The bipartisan bill offers a path to citizenship for the millions of immigrants living in the country illegally. The addition of 20,000 new Border Patrol agents and 700 miles of fencing along the U.S.-Mexico border addressed Republicans' concerns about border security and won I enough support to pass in the Senate. The yeas on this bill are 68, the nays are 32. The bill as amended is passed. But this bill may not go very far. Speaker John Boehner has already signaled the legislation does not stand a chance in the GOP-controlled House. The House is not going to take up and vote on whatever the Senate passes. The major sticking point for several Republicans is the pathway to citizenship. Many are opposed to giving amnesty to millions of illegal immigrants. Jaylene Alfaro's father hopes House lawmakers come around. Not only for my family, but for 11 million of people who are in the same condition. The White House has already said it backs the Senate's bill. Danielle Nottingham, News 2. And keeping our eye on the economy, a trio of better than expected economic reports push stocks higher for a third straight day. Fewer Americans applied for unemployment benefits last week. Further evidence of a modest improvement in the job market and more fallout for Paula Dean over her use of a racial slur years ago. Target, Walmart and Home Depot now says once existing merchandise has sold out, they will not carry Dean's line of food and cookware. The 66-year-old celebrity chef admitted using a racial slur during a deposition in a discrimination lawsuit. This is a New York Stock Exchange with Scotiabank's stock market. Watch everything up. The Dow, Nasdaq, S&P, Dow 114, Nasdaq 25, S&P 9. Coming up on News 2, many say summertime is the time to go out and enjoy the outdoors and nature. For a group of students, their summer will be all about that with an eco camp. Plus, the festival and cultural organization is preparing for the big day, the festival parade on July 4th. But in the meantime, many are gearing up for the opening of the festival village. Today is National HIV Testing Day and several organizations throughout the territory offered free HIV tests all day. We have had quite a few people who have turned out, some of it due primarily to individuals who already are afraid of getting tested for HIV, but because we're also offering the free blood pressure and the free glucose screening, they came out to get that done and in addition to that also received the free HIV testing. I know that several times I went to get tested and I had to wait in line. So I went back to my office, I was finally able to jump the line and get tested. When we say it's a fun day, what we, again, the goal is to reduce the stigma which is associated with HIV AIDS. And so if we make it seem like it's just the norm, it's cool to get tested. Hey, I got tested. Did you get tested? Do you know any status? That's the whole idea and whole atmosphere, making it a fun party atmosphere to encourage people to get tested. Bethlehem's Sugar Factory is hosting their first eco camp this summer. Shanika Robinson has more. The Bethlehem Sugar Factory Eco Camp is located across the street from the National Guard's Armory. This camp is designed to allow their campers to explore their environment, learn ways to conserve energy, and much more. We're getting more younger youths involved, which is from the age of 5 to 12. And we're doing our first Eco Nature Summer Camp, where they have hands-on when it comes to the garden, games, going at historical sites, walking around, learning more about Bethlehem Sugar Factory. The Eco Nature Camp is still accepting applications and is available for students age 5 through 14. Bethlehem's Eco Nature Camp will allow students to visit historical and cultural sites, make their own dye and paint from local plants and fruits, recreate well known cultural artifacts, and so much more. The camp will be going from 8 in the morning till 3, and from 3 to 5 will be where we have anytime extra hours. We'll extend the extra hours till 5. The camp started on June 14 and is still open for registration. EcoCamp's last day is scheduled for August 2nd. 
Well, this summer, I just wanted to, to have the kids to have a better understanding and a better appreciation for their environment and their culture here as Virgin Island residents. The environment is something that we can't change. We have to live with it. So in order to have to, to better ourselves, we have to start with the younger generation. We got to also thank the Department of Education because they also will be donating lunch for the youth them. So we have lunch and board. For more information, call 244-1484 or email renicejames at live.com. We're encouraging more families to bring the children out here and join this eco nature camp that we have that they could see all what we're offering. Chiniqua Robinson, News 2. But once more, the campsite is located across the street from the National Guard Armory on St. Croix, so don't hesitate to stop by if you're in the area. Well, the festival and cultural organization is preparing for the big day, the festival parade on July 4th. But in the meantime, many are gearing up for the opening of the festival village on St. John's, 7 p.m. at the Cruise Bay parking lot. The village honoree is Stedwin Fret Sr. I interviewed him also. He gave me a whole lot of everything, how he worked for almost 20 years with his wife. We just recently passed last November and they had a booth and they worked and they cooked and he used to do all the fishing for the, um, the boots because it was small at that time, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And deadline for a parade application is June 29th. And if you have any questions or concern, the number to call for that is 690-1225. And the fax them if you have your application and haven't gotten it in yet is 776-6992. Come early and stay late. <laughs> come to the beach and just walk around and enjoy St. John because it's going to be fun. Now on Thursday, July 4th, it's Juve time beginning at 4 a.m. Then the festival parade at 11. The fireworks will light up the sky during the fireworks display 9 p.m. at the Cruise Bay Harbor. Well, stick around, your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.